Now with this new solution you can convert the memory of your AI agents to videos then you might say why we should do it because with doing so you can store millions of documents and text and whatever you have for your agents like memory stuff to have them compress up to 10 times more with having them just as mp4 data or file instead of running gigantic databases to manage and host those vector embeddings and good news is that you can just install this new solution with pip install memvid and let me show you how you can utilize it right now in your own projects all right, Memvid is a new open source package just released. I'll share with you the GitHub repository of this solution, but check this out. With just three lines of code here, now you can convert all those chunks that you could create for having, let's say, your RAG agents or even as a memory for your continuous learning agents. Now we can just convert them to, convert them to videos with, let's say, MP4 formats with just importing Memvid after, of course, doing pip install Memvid. Well, let's dig into that actually. What is the value of this Memvid package and what would be the, the contribution compared to traditional vector databases that you use it for your memory or retrieval for your AI agents? Now, this is how Memvid works and then we'll talk about what's the value of that. First, as usual, it will chunk the data or chunk your text into multiple pieces then it will also generate embeddings out of the chunks. So far, it's like traditional approach and here's the key point. It will actually convert those vector embeddings and the actual text or actual value of your data to Q QR code. So that means we have one QR code here. For the next chunk, we will have another QR code. And after bringing all these QR codes together, we are creating an MP4 video file. So let's dig into that a little bit further. Here's an example. I have this chunk of data here. Let's say it's just a text example out of an article that I have. And we are spilling it out to multiple chunks, chunks one, two, three. Then moving forward, for each chunk, I will have the text, I will have the embedding, I will have the ID of that, and also I will have the metadata that where this chunk is coming from. I will take this and using actually face, it will just store the metadata information of that where this chunk is coming from and what is the frame number in that video that is talking about that chunk. That's why after doing that compress of this package, I will have that as a QR code. So this QR code will have information about the embeddings, what source of the data, and what is the text or actual text of the data just represented in one QR code example. Now with having these multiple QR codes that are sequential chunks of my text, I will now create a memory, uh, a memory MP4 file. Now, if file, uh, frame per second of the video is higher, that means I am adding more chunks, lower, less chunks. Okay, now, after creating this MP4 file, how we query this video for retrieving chunks and text or memory for my AI agents. So let's say here is my query that I'm going to ask from this memory or from my vector DB tradition, but here as a video. Then I will start using my embedding model. I create the embedding out of it. I will use face to find out what is the frame number in the video that include the QR code of my document and actual text of the source. It will tell you, the face will tell you that, okay, go to the frame 42 and frame 127. These are the QR codes for the actual text that talks about quantum computing. And then I will decode that QR code using Memvid package to grab that original document. Now, here's an example of a QR code. There are some bigger squares at the corners. These are just the patterns alignment for scanning through, let's say, camera, which is a typical QR code thing. And then we have some white and black squares. These are technically the binary data that represent my embeddings and vector database and also the QR code actual text information. And then because we are compressing this through QR code, we can sort of around have 2.5 kilobyte compressed text vector embed, embed, uh, embedded metadata all together just in one QR code. And moving forward, here's the main part that what would be the difference of this approach versus traditional vector database for memory stuff? The first thing is pricing. Now you have to, for traditional databases, you have to pair, let's say, per gigabyte for having your database running, let's say through any cloud provider or any license that you have for the databases. But here with MemVideo, nothing. It's just an MP4 file 
that you can technically save it locally or any very cheap storage solution. So that's a huge difference. Second is infrastructure. With vector databases, you have to come up with a cluster, an API endpoint, a cloud that you need internet to connect to. But here, you have portability of your memory of your AI agents because you have just one MP4 file, you can grab and copy and paste it everywhere you want. That means your memory is not just tied to a specific database provider or vector database provider, which is a great asset. The only caveat is that with traditional databases, you can quickly have real-time updates or deletes. But with this one, although you can append, but video is not as efficient as a database for, for automatically real-time updating that. But if your agents or memory or your vector databases doesn't need necessarily real-time updates, then you can think about Membit. And distribution. It's definitely server dependent on based on what your vector database is, but with MV4, you can just literally have it anywhere crack carried on USB or even you can stream that on YouTube if you want to. So what are the values of this QR code approach and why it's, it's a really genius solution that works to actually check out further to see if it's a relevant choice for you or not is that I told you portability. This is a great, great contribution because sometimes I feel like these AI agents are tied to a memory sitting somewhere. And if you want to change your vector database or utilize another memory service, you cannot easily do that. But here's just an MP4 file. You can grab it and dump it everywhere. So potentially you can have it also hosted on YouTube or scan it with your phone and copy that USB stick everywhere. The second thing is compression up to 10 times. This approach is more compressed compared to a traditional vector database, which is a huge, huge difference from the size perspective. We already talked about distribution, also security. If you want, you can have also some encryption, some watermark capability to make sure if you're adding like that MP4 video somewhere, people who are watching it won't extract your data or vector embedding. So you, have, you can have that option too. And why do we still have face in this solution? I say that face is like a traditional indexing and stuff. Well, it's not here being used for hosting the actual document. Face is there to just give us a similarity search of indexing to find which frame of that video hosts my actual documents. So that means that video that we have is really handling the main data storage of our documents and memory, all those texts that I don't need to pay for a database to host that for me. So with combining these two, we sort of have the best of the world. The similarity search by face and open source and here video file that save our story, uh, save our actual documents in a much more compressed and also faster retrieval solution. So Memvid is really good when you have sort of a lot of documents and research. But again, if you want to have some live updates, maybe you still go with Vector TV. If you want to have some offline solutions that you don't necessarily need internet, this is a great approach with Memvid, but otherwise VictorDB is also good and it has some access control user isolation that you won't necessarily have over a video file unless you manage that by yourself. And in Memvid, it's, it's really useful for mobile apps because of this portability, but for VictorDB, if you need some hybrid search or forward files, it's still going to be especially for complex queries. And that's pretty much all. So for massive scale, I haven't personally tried how MP4 we would go at it. Of course, you can have videos up to multiple hours long video or multiple files of video. So it still is a scalable. I haven't tried to actually say that if it's as scalable as traditional vector databases. All right. So let me show you how actually you can start using Mendit. So here's a GitHub repository. I will add the link of the GitHub repo in Discord channel and the link of Discord channel link is added on the video description below. You go to the channel, there's a reference section, you will get access to all the assets of the videos that I'm creating. So here, what you need to do, just simply start pip install memvit. And here it talks about some main values and features that I already talked about that. And if you want to also have PDF supported with memvit, you just need to do pip install memvit by PDF too. So these are two main packages you need to actually have that enabled. All right, jumping into my VS Code, I want to give it a try and let you know how, how it works. So I already did pip installs, I'm all good. Here is a quick example that I have a bunch of chunks, very simple and sort of a hello world example. And then with uh, importing memvit encoder, I want to encode these chunks and finally have my MP4 file, which has, let's say memory or my documents here. So I will just run it Python pretest.py. I already ran it, so that's why it might take a couple of seconds. There you go, even faster. So 
here it is. I have, I can see that it created this MP4 file for me. And if I open this up, it, it is actually a QR code with multiple frames. You'll see that it's moved pretty fast because I have just a couple of chunks of data. I actually took in a screenshot out of this QR code and gave it to an online QR code scanner. And it was able to tell me that, okay, this is actually the actual text that you have, which is definitely the text that I had in the code, which is here. So the idea was really simple, but it's still very powerful. Not only that, these are, this is just a text coming in as a chunk within my code, but also I can do it with PDF files. Let's say I have this Bitcoin, Bitcoin PDF. I can actually run this, which I ran it before, but to just show you again, I can also now encode this PDF to multiple chunks of frames of QR code and then finally create this MP4. So we're just running Python, chat.py, which is the name of my file. There we go. So it was also pretty fast for me either. This package also will come with a chat interface too. So if you want to chat with your documents through this MP4 based retrieval, you can have that enabled just to provide your LLM API, let's say Google, OpenAI, Cloud, so on and so forth. And as you can see, it also created this book memory MP4 for me. And because I asked like, hey, search the paper abstract of this Bitcoin PDF, it also retrieved that chunk for me just using this MP4, which is definitely powerful. So coming back to the GitHub repository, they do have multiple examples highlighted. This is the basic usage. I just ran it for you. Here is what I just ran the last time, which is building a memory from document that I showed you quickly. Also, if you want to do some more advanced search and retrieval, you can specify your number of chunks. So top case up. Same thing that you have in actual retrieval for the memory or for the rag agents, you still have them all here. And as I told you, it has interactive chat interface too. So you can just start chatting with your data, which is based on that MP4 file that's going to start running a web server for you on your local host machine. And there are a couple of test examples it comes up with. And lastly, here's an actual end to an example that you can chat with your PDF book using Memvid, which is using, again, video files for retrieving information. All right, that was all about Memvid, which we were able to actually quickly install, check it out, and see what's the main value of utilizing this approach compared to traditional databases for your retrieval or memory of your AI agents. I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below, and make sure you subscribe so you will not miss the next video. Thank you so much.